actions are monitored. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> and the school, if the, stu the school should provide uh, supervised social experiences um, so that, as to avoid, you know, uh, really unfortunate, out of control social interactions occurring. Um, and in many ways, the, you know, the things that will work well for a student with nonverbal learning disability will also work well for a student with ADHD and will also work well for a student who has dyslexia. Um, because they all, need, uh, they all need to be in safe environments, tolerant, and again, educational environments that um, allow for diversity and different um, and, and opportunities to show learning in different ways and opportunities to break down barriers that get in the way of learning. So, um, we're, we have just a few more minutes and I wonder if you all have any questions. Yes? You mentioned earlier that dyslexics, you can sort of help to rewire their brains so that they do learn like, words from as a building block. Mm -hmm. Is there something similar that you know, you know giving some great strategies for children with NLD, but is there a way to sort of rewire their brains? You know, unfortunately, sure. I don't think we have the, the level of research um, for, for NLD that we do with dyslexia. Um, <clears throat> and, and we also have highly scientific methods of instruction that have been honed over a fairly long period of, you know, for, well, eight years or so. NLD is, I think we're still in the, very much in the formative stages of figuring out what will work. I do think that for students who have social impacts, that social skills training can be really useful. Um, I know you have one here. My son is 12, and mm -hmm. he can't take it down the school year because of the schedule. Yeah. But I know you have one in the summer, and would you recommend 9 to 12 or, or the teenage one? Because he'll be 13 next year. He's going to seventh grade. Kind of depends on his your assessment of his, you know, developmental and maturity level. Talk so, to the people in charge of that, they're really good. Yeah, and I would say, yeah, I don't have anything to do with that, so you should talk to them okay. and, see, and see what they recommend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, I'm, you can call the school and find out who the, the people are okay. and do that. They've been here a long time. Yes? Are there any good estimates of the prevalence of this? I know they say, like, at the film event I went to on Sunday, I think that they were saying like one in five children are dyslexic. Mm -hmm. and we've got those stats for ADHD, but for, for NLD, is there any kind of an estimate in the general population? There, there is. I don't know how good it is, though. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly. It's definitely lower mm -hmm. than either dyslexia or, <clears throat> or ADHD. And it's comorbid with some of those things mm -hmm. as well. So it's, you know, those are, uh, the way we figure out estimates is looking at like how many kids qualify in special ed or how many students declare they have LD that are applying to college and things like that. So it's, it's never completely. What about active. your population at Groves? Do you have sort of an estimate of how many students at Groves fit that? I don't know what that would be. We do have some students with NLD, mm -hmm. um, and I, but I don't know the, you know, I don't know the, the percentage. Actually. So it's more like it's one of those things, we know it's out there, but yeah, quantifying it is not really very yeah. easy. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yes? Has this presentation been provided to uh, teachers who have students with NLD here at Groves? And if not, will it? Um, they haven't had this presentation because I just finished it today. Okay. <laughs> but um, but they have information about NLD and it definitely will. Yeah. Definitely. Good. Um, and yeah, and I think um, uh, I I think. My impression is that a uh, teacher's kind of understanding about a number of these different disorders is, is, is pretty high 
Um, not that they couldn't learn more, and uh, probably much higher than in the general teacher population, I would say. <clears throat> Anybody else? Here at Groves or overall? Here at Groves. Okay. I, meant. Yeah. I was just curious. Um, I know it's not recognized as special ed, so say your child does not, is not able to get on an IEP, obviously, because they don't qualify. You may have to be able to get a 504. Yeah. We're already on one. It's not that helpful. Yeah, it actually, it's only for accommodations. It's not for any modifications. Right. So I'm curious now, my question has been to the school district now, if our son being in eighth grade, what happens as he gets to the high school and you have these high stakes tests, and now kids are not graduating from high school, um, if they don't pass some of these tests, so would that be my child if he doesn't qualify for an IEP and a 504 is very limited as far as what it can do for your child? I'm just like, you know, where do we go from here as a parent to advocate for your child? That's, that's a very good question. Um, what you... I, I can't, I don't have the expertise to answer that. However, the Learning Disabilities Association of Minnesota, the ADA, um, does have uh, workshops and, um, and advocacy um, services there, as does PACER. Yeah, that's very common. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, they may be able to, they may be able to answer that question. Um, I, I have another suggestion too. Is if, has your child had a neuropsych eval? Um, it's coming up in February. There might be some really helpful information in there yeah, too. Yeah, that's kind of where hope. Carry that piece of paper with you to all your meetings with your teachers and stuff. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Done that. We have a senior with this. Senior high school. Okay. So. Can I just ask you where you went through? Like what? What um, was it? Psych well, they do a really good job here. Okay. At, so he had one here. He's also had them at the University oh, of Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, those are, yeah, both good places, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. Thank I you. I really appreciate you coming tonight, um, and I uh, hope it's useful to you. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, we do offer diagnostic services here, and uh, um, that may be of help also. And uh, um, I, I, I wish I knew. I wish I could. I'm hesitant to offer very much about you know services in public schools. I know what they are, and I know what they. Yeah, but the, the the fine points of legalities. It really kind of depends on how much you know and you know what you know you want. To, I generally, when I'm never wanting anything for student, for children in schools, is to go and say I want this and this and this and this. You know, and then when they tell you, um, <clears throat> you can't, you know, you can hold your recommendations for the neuropsych evaluation and things like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.